Look at this, I'm wiggling my fingers. I love it. Hello, my name is Brad, and today we are taking a look at the new Clip Studio 2.0 update. They've added a lot of new features. We're gonna start with the first one that they list, which is the ability to adjust and play with and modify their 3D head models. So I am going to tap on window. I'm gonna go down to materials and I'm going to choose pose. I don't know if that's the most effective way to get there, but there's this little scroll bar over here on the left-hand side and I'm going to tap on head. That's gonna bring up all my 3D heads. I'm just gonna take one of them and I'm going to drag it on to the canvas. So this has been here for a while and we could turn it around and we could do all sorts of different poses with it and whatnot. But what they have added is this little wrench here. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on it and I'm gonna to go to facial features. And what this allows me to do is select various parts. For example, I can select the forehead and I could change the height of that forehead. I could make it a really low forehead. And this is kind of cool because we can actually really make this guy a monster. We could change the position of his nose, maybe the angle of his nose. I don't want to change the angle of it. I don't want it going off to the side, but we could change the width of that nose, the height of that nose, the nose tip, the nose bridge. Let's actually move that out. So this thing is a real monster factory here. And you can do this with any of the preset heads that they have in here. So if you want to create a character and use this as the reference for your drawing, you could totally do that. That's not the only 3D thing they have added here. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my head here. And this time I'm gonna go back and I'm going to uh, drag a body type in here. And we're gonna be looking specifically at the hand. So let me let me raise this hand up. I'm gonna rotate this model over. I don't know the best way to show this. Let's zoom way in on that hand. Maybe I'll, I'll move it out and over so you can see this. Okay, so what they've added, this is I think my favorite feature in this entire thing, is the ability to control the position of the hand or what the hand looks like based on your camera. So in the toolbar along the bottom of your 3D character, there's this little arrow tool. If I tap on that, there is a hand scanner camera. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Uh, let's get my hand up here. I'm gonna raise it really high. And you can see that uh, it is mapping my hand. So as I maybe take some fingers and I curl them in, it's doing that for me. So I can form a fist. That is that is weird. What are, what are you doing with your finger, buddy? Yeah, but I, I can actually do various things with my hand and it's going to mimic that. So if you're having trouble drawing hands, this is a great way to use your own hand as a reference. What else do they have here? They've added tilt correction that adjusts the camera position uh, to appear like two point perspective. They've added uh, 3D fog effects that adjust the color distance of objects to create more of an aerial perspective. They've also added some text features here so you can select multiple text boxes and when you change the format of that text it changes in all those boxes at once. They've also added some webtoon features. It sounds like these are built around the canvas so as your canvas gets longer if there's a gradient or something like that in the background it's just going to extend with your canvas. The next thing they have is an automatic shading tool. Let's let's take a closer look at this one. Okay, so I have an illustration here. This is one of the illustrations that we did for my intro to digital art course. Link down below in the description if you'd like to learn more. I think you'd like it. We do a lot with brushes and shading and just basically getting used to using all the tools in digital art. I'm going to turn off these layers. Oops, I think I turned off the wrong layer. I need those outlines. So what this automatic shading tool does is exactly what it says it tries to figure out what the shading of your drawing should be so basically what I've narrowed this down to is I have the outlines of my drawing and on a different layer I have the flat color so I'm going to make sure I have the right layer selected yes I have my flat color selected I'm gonna go over to edit and go down to shading assist now that's gonna pull up this little dialogue thing and you could already see it's trying to shade this character and and overall just going with the basics here it looks solid. There are a whole bunch of presets here. So right now I could go with the standard preset. Um, I could go with an evening preset, which makes changes the color a little bit. There's a nighttime preset. That's kind of neat. Uh, there's like a backlight preset. Let's go back to the standard preset for a second. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. This little blue thing, which turns orange when you hover on it, this is my light source. So if I move that down here, you can see that my, my highlights and my shadows are going to a different location. If I move it up here, goes back to that standard location. I can also change this from a cell shading to smooth shading. Um, so that's kind of neat. And you could actually adjust this and say, I want more highlights. I want less highlights. You know, I want more shadows. 
So um, there's all sorts of different settings that you could go into. Uh, maybe I want to adjust my cell pieces to bring up the shadow a little more. I could totally do that. And then there's a bunch of things you could adjust like the blending modes and all that fun stuff. Overall, I'm liking this. I don't know if I would use this for my illustrations necessarily, uh, just because it's, it's a little chunky around the edges. It doesn't give you that nice crisp edge. It, it kind of fuzzes it up a little bit, but overall, as a reference, if you're trying to figure out where your light is coming from, it's not a bad idea to like maybe light up one of your models and on a different layer, have your flat colors so you could use that as a reference. I could see that working really well. Some of the other things they added is they added some alignment tools here. So if you have a lot of different objects, you can now align them a lot easier. Also some more realistic brush rendering. The example that they use here is they're painting on some yellow with blue and you can actually see the green showing through. So it's less blue sitting on top of the yellow. It's just more of a real realistic color blending mode. They've also added a fisheye lens. I'm going to go up to, I think it's in layer. And then we go over to ruler slash frame, create perspective ruler. Now we've always been able to do like a 1.2 point, three point perspective, but now there is a little checkbox here for a fisheye perspective and three point. I'm going to click. Okay. Uh, this might be kind of hard to see, but there's basically some very faint purple outlines that show us our fisheye lens. And of course, now our drawing tools are going to snap into place. So as I start drawing here, it's going to snap in place on our on our fisheye lens. Oops, picking up my hand a little bit there. This is cool. I could actually see myself using this to like draw a forest or something like that. Maybe like the bottom is down there and the trees are looming up over you this could be a lot of fun to play with if i grab the object tool over here and i select that perspective grid i now can edit it so you can actually change the location of those grid lines and change the distortion strength and that sort of thing so just like the other perspective grids there are some options here that you could go into and fiddle with a little bit some other things they've added is uh background saving background saving i think was there before at least it was there on android but I think they're doing it faster now so you don't see that little saving bar pop up and like disrupt your flow every so often. There's also a spin blur filter for a uh, rotating motion blur effect. They have a little example of this. Uh, I think that looks pretty cool. They also have filters for lens and distortions and panoramas. And now you can use liquify on uh, multiple layers at the same time. And the last thing here is you can search layers by keyword. So I guess now I have to start like I don't know, naming my layers. So overall, some really cool stuff here. Uh, I should talk about the pricing options. Um, if you want to upgrade and you are already using version 1.5, whatever the last version is, Currently, it's $19 to do that to get a perpetual license that will last you forever. There was a little bit of drama this fall about how they rolled out those pricing plans. It was was a little bit strange. Basically, if you buy this version, the features that I've just talked about you will get all of those. However, what you won't get with the perpetual license is any features they add from this day going forward. In order to get those, you're gonna need to subscribe on an annual basis. Those subscriptions start at $25 a year. Uh, I think you can pay by month. That's like five bucks a month. If you've never owned Clip Studio and you just want the single perpetual license, that's $50. Now, I have read the comments on other videos about their subscription plans. And yes, I know many of you hate it. So I totally get that. If it's valuable to you is up to you. That sounded weird. To me, as someone who uses this tool all the time as a professional and has to load it up on various different devices to test them out, I think $25 a year is a very you know, reasonable amount of money to spend. It's totally up to you whether it's worth that much for this tool, how much you use it, how much you need those new features. Right now, it's kind of hard to tell what new features are going to be coming down the road, how often those are gonna roll out. So I understand there is some mystery to that and that adds to the frustration, but time will tell. But overall, I think these are some really cool, solid features they've added to the product. I think this is a nice rollout for version 2.0. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.